Welcome back to America Right Now. Now some breaking news for you. Reports out of the White House have now confirmed that the call between President Biden and Russian President Putin has ended. The call, which lasted just over an hour, comes amid the rising tensions between Ukraine and Russia. The purpose of the call was to an attempt to de-escalate the situation, which has seen more than 130,000 Russian troops amassed near the Ukraine's border. We will monitor the situation for any news, any readout of that call and bring you more details as they become available here at Newsmax. Moving on, as the Winter Olympics in Communist China continues, we certainly wish our athletes continued success. They're apparently living in very poor conditions and under constant surveillance. We wanted to give you a glimpse today, though, of what life is like for the average Chinese citizen. We know about the Uyghur genocide, but while China puts on a happy face for the world, What's happening when the cameras are off? To discuss, we welcome China policy expert Gordon Chang and an eyewitness to Mao's cultural revolution, Lily Tang Williams. Ms. Williams is also a candidate for Congress in the great state of New Hampshire. Gordon, uh, first of all, it's, it's great to have you both here for this special conversation. Gordon, we too often m dismiss communism in today's society. The conversation is sort of dominated by the left and they're very dismissive of it. Set the table for us here. What do Americans need to know about life in China for the average person today? Well, China is no longer authoritarian, as everybody says. It really is semi-totalitarian. And Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, is fast moving the country back to totalitarianism. We know this because of the nationwide social credit system, the Great Firewall, the hundreds of millions of surveillance cameras, and Xi Jinping's absolute demand for obedience. Now, he's not able to obtain absolute obedience yet, and his position in Beijing is fragile, but that's where he's pushing the country. Mm -hmm. So look like when you think about this, this is going back to Maoist China. Not there yet, but headed in that direction. Lily, you've seen the brutality and the control of the CCP up close. Talk to us about what that was like. Well, I lived under CCP for almost 24 years of my life and, uh, you know, suffered under Mao's Cultural Revolution. I'm a fully, you know, recognizing their true colors. So whatever the international reporters and ethnic see today and the Chinese people's life, just think about it, probably a hundred times worse, but you cannot see it. So the average people's life today, they, if you they live in the countryside, you actually could be hungry and now potentially on food rationing again, and you're subject to 100% control where you can go, where you can move to, to live. If there are a few cases in your city, you get shut down, zero COVID policies, and that means 30 million people could be stuck. Mm -hmm. And only your top government officials, party officials, you get the food delivered to you as priority. And of course, censorship. You cannot say whatever you wanted to say. You cannot even think the way you wanted to think mm -hmm. because the propaganda is everywhere from morning to night in your face every day and track you every day 24 seven by your cell phone. They are pushing for cashless society now mm -hmm. and the COVID code on your cell phone to track you as a COVID passport, yeah. social credit system. So you're basically like a, a, a slave, but too bad a lot of Chinese who are inside the China don't know yeah. that because they have no access to free speech and free press. It's all dominated and controlled yeah. by one party rule. Most of the people in China have no access to the outside world whatsoever. We oh. just spoke, Gordon, with the president of the Heritage Foundation about free speech and about privacy threats here in this country. Gordon, talk to us about this, this social credit system that the CCP uses to control the public. The idea is that every Chinese citizen gets a constantly updated score. That score is updated based upon observable behaviors. So for instance, if you pay your mortgage on time, your score will go up. If you jaywalk or you criticize Xi Jinping, your score will go down. And if your score falls below a certain level, then they're not going to let you leave your home. That's their aspiration. To, so you can't put your kids in school. You can't get a bus ticket. You can't even open up your front door. And there are many Chinese dissidents who are now under, for instance, house arrest because of the Olympics 
but they will still continue to be under house arrest after the Olympics are gone because wow. you then have the National People's Congress meeting, the 20th National Congress. It right. goes on and on. Lily, there are, and I've only got about a minute left, but there are voices in this country, Lily, who dismiss the atrocities in China and downplay the communist ideology. What are you seeing here in the U.S., especially since you're running for Congress here? What are you seeing here in the U.S. that concerns you and is reminiscent of what you and your family left behind? Well, that uh, I see lots of uh, similarities. That's why I'm running, because uh, I fear the country I love is becoming more like the country I left. And I survived the Mao's Cultural Revolution. I see so many similarities with today's vocalism, cancel culture, censorship, even control the words and control your thoughts, people are whispering. It's so sad for me to see what this country has become. So that's why I wanted to tell my stories and to wake up my fellow citizens. It is a time to be awake and to really fight for our individual liberties guaranteed by the Constitution and by our Creator. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I always I think about social media when you think about that social credit system where you're being tracked, you have no privacy, you're getting those thumbs up or their thumbs down, they know what you're saying, they know what p pictures you're, po you're putting up there. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And the Biden administration wants to now put cameras all over the place as well. Pete Buttigieg was talking about that. Lily Tang Williams and Gordon Chang, thank you so much for your insights. That was terrific. Thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.